I woke up this morning with a sense of dread after I read a few of the articles that were in the news. That if things continue to go the way they're going, decades from now, historians will write that the election of 2016 will have been the last non-fraudulent election in American political history. Let me explain what I'm talking about here. A few days ago, I ran across a, uh, an article from the BBC, its website, about fraud in political elections. It wasn't an article about our 2020 election. The article was from 2016. It wasn't about fraud in the 2016 election in the United States either. It was about fraud in third world countries. Specifically, it was a case in Africa. And the BBC offered from experts on voter fraud six signs of voter fraud to look for in an election. Now, I'll link to that article up here and I'll put it in the description. Sometimes if you're watching TV, those things don't show up on a TV. Of the six signs, we've already seen four of them in this election. The sixth wouldn't be possible in the United States. We don't post results on blackboards where people can take pictures, which was one of the ways, one of the signs. And the fifth, it's still out until we get all the voters' uh, returns in, but it's conceivable that'll be two. Uh, so of the, the five possible uh, signals of voter fraud in a country, we've already seen four in this country. And the fifth remains a distinct possibility. And I think that, that really makes you wonder about what the hell is going on in this election. If indeed there is voter fraud, and that's a, at this point, still a perceptual problem, there's plenty of evidence seemingly around, although a lot of it's being ignored. The, the mainstream press just ignores virtually all these stories. The only stories they ever print is when a court turns down uh, a Trump uh, claim. When they address the Trump claim, that pretty much gets ignored as is true of also the evidence in these claims. For example, the other day there was an article about uh, the, uh, it was on CNN, on the Pennsylvania uh, court cases being brought by the Trump administration. And they were just labeled DOA. And I looked down through the article thinking maybe they linked to the PDF of, of the actual legal document filed by the Trump administration. Nope. So I went to five other articles they weren't quite as harsh in being DOA, calling it DOA as the CNN was. But in the other five articles, I noticed there were no links to the PDF either. So it took me about 15 seconds to find it online. And then I actually read the court challenge and it really had nothing to do with what they had been talking about in the article. They said there was no evidence of any votes being changed. And the court case was actually not documenting changed votes. It was documenting the actions of the state of Pennsylvania, particularly the Department of State, and the woman who's the head of that, whose name escapes me at the moment, for violating the U.S. Constitution, the Pennsylvania Constitution, and the statutes of the state of Pennsylvania. They weren't trying to get votes changed. They were trying to stop the certification in the state of the vote citing all these irregularities. That's what's happening in the press. They're just ignoring the claims. That doesn't mean that that means the claims are true. It just makes one awfully suspicious when they won't even talk about what the claims are and they obfuscate the reality of what's being charged in these documents. Now, if there is in fact voter fraud, and that's yet to be proven beyond a reasonable doubt, and it may never be proven beyond a reasonable doubt. But if there is voter fraud and nothing is done about it, no remedial actions are taken by the courts, and this election stands with Joe Biden uh, being declared ultimately uh, president-elect officially, what would that mean for this country? 
my reading of history is that when you subsidize something or reward something, in this case, a behavior, you get more of it, not less of it. If it's true, and I can't say with metaphysical certainty that it is, but if it's true, as, as many people, probably most Republicans believe, that the Democrats cheated in this election in places like Philadelphia and Minneapolis and Milwaukee and Detroit, Atlanta. If that's true and nothing's done, what do you think they're going to do in the next election? What are they going to do? You know, in take, you look at the state of Georgia where they increased the voter turnout by 33% over 2016. Almost as much over 20. 2008, when Barack Obama was the candidate. I mean, we're really expected to believe that Joe Biden is, is just such a powerful candidate that he got 9 million more votes than Barack Obama did in 2008. I'm sorry, I, I just don't buy that. But if they got away with this, what would have to be massive voter fraud in Georgia, what are they going to do in the two Senate runoff elections? Are we going to step back and say, we better not do that again? We almost got caught? No, that's not the way the system works. When you get away with something, you do more of it. There's no reason for them to do less of it. And I see pundits and Republicans and people on the Internet saying, well, they may steal this one, but we're going to get them in 2022 or we're going to get them in 2024. I mean, we have to consider the possibility that after this election, they're just going to do even more of it. They'll do as much as they need to hold on to power. They're not going to do less of it. They're not going to step back. They're going to just push forward. If they get control of the Senate, we'll have, you know, everybody will get a mail ballot mailed to them. They'll allow ballot harvesting. They'll do a, a voting by postmark which can always be backdated if you control the post office, which they apparently do. There's no chance the Democrats will win every national election. They'll lose in red states and red counties and things like that, for sure. There'll always be Republican victories at the state and local level. But at the national level, forget it. The Democrats will just control everything. I mean, one of the reasons that they, they aren't doing well in California congressional races is they apparently didn't cheat enough there, or they didn't cheat at all. Turnout in California went down over 500,000. Democrat turnout. Republican turnout went up. Whereas in, in neighboring states, Arizona, Democrat turnout went up about 450,000 votes. It, these are incredible numbers. They're They're anomalies at the minimum. I think they're evidence of corruption. But if they've gotten away with it, they're just going to keep doing it. The Republicans will never win the presidency again. I think that's a serious consideration. I mean, I was born in Philadelphia December 31st, 1951. A Republican was mayor. He'd already been voted out. Before I was uh, baptized, the Democrats have taken over the city. They're still in control. They've never lost control of the city of Philadelphia. How many other cities have we seen this happening where they've been in control for 30, 40, 50 years? Atlanta, which saw the biggest increase in Democrat voter turnout in this election compared to 2016 and 2008, 33%. 33% in one election. Atlanta has been under Democrat control since Reconstruction in the 19th century. That was the last time Republicans controlled that city and some of those surrounding counties. Reconstruction. You're talking like the 1870s, early 1880s, since Republicans have run that city. Democrats have run it almost for a century and a half. That's the pattern. Once they get in power and they start using their corruption, you'll never get them out again. Think Venezuela. Chavez got in. They can't get him. They can get him out. They can't get a successor out through an election. He, whoever it is, there's always enough corruption that they end up winning.
So I think we, we on the right have to seriously consider the possibility that there will be no political comeback at the national level after this election. If indeed, if you believe that the Democrats cheated, if you believe they committed voter fraud on a massive scale, significantly only where they needed to carry those particular states, which seems to be the pattern. I've talked about that in an earlier video, which I'll link here and in the description. If you believe that, then it follows there's not going to be a comeback. If they cheated in 2020, they'll cheat in the runoff in 2021 in Georgia, runoffs. They'll cheat in 2022. They'll cheat in 2024. They'll always find enough votes to win. And again, if they get control of the Senate and they can pass legislation to allow ballot harvesting, you know, everybody gets a ballot in the mail. It's all over. What do you think? You think I'm right? And if I'm right, what do we do? What should be our next step as conservatives in this country? Let me know in a comment. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos. Share the video with your friends. And until the next time, Keep fighting.